Here's another metaphor for dynamic equilibrium, tandem jugglers. In either of the juggler's hands at any given time, let's say there are two pens. But if you watch the jugglers in action, of course, there are many, many pens crossing back and forth between them over a period of time. And so the rates of pens moving left to right and right to left are clearly non-zero. Things are still happening. But the rates of pens moving are equal to each other. This ensures that each individual juggler only has two pens at a given time, and more generally, the number of pens in each juggler's hands is not changing with time. This is a state of dynamic equilibrium, and exactly what molecules are doing in converting from reactants to products and products to reactants in a chemical system at equilibrium. Here's an example of a system that starts in a non-equilibrium state at a time t equals zero and reaches an equilibrium state at some future time. So we start with a tube full of N2O4 gas. That's the reactant. And you can see here that the N2O4 gas is colorless. We see that in the first tube here. Slowly but surely, that N2O4 will react. And of course, at the initial stage, only the forward reaction can take place. And so after some amount of time, we're in what's called a pre-equilibrium situation where some of the N2O4 has been converted to NO2 gas and some N2O4 remains. And you can actually see in the microscopic picture here that we have a number of NO2 molecules in here, but we also have some N2O4 left behind. And so at this point, both the forward and reverse reactions can take place, but the forward reaction rate is still a little bit greater than the reverse reaction rate. Finally, at the equilibrium state, the concentrations of N2O4 and NO2 appear to be unchanging with time. And here we reach a situation where we again have some molecules of NO2 around. I'll circle those. And we have some molecules of N2O4 still remaining around. And notice the numbers of molecules are not equal. The concentrations of reactants and products are not necessarily equal here. What are equal are the rates of production and consumption of N2O4 and NO2, the rates of the forward and reverse reactions. And if we just let that equilibrium tube sit there, the concentrations will appear to be unchanging with time, provided no other conditions like temperature or pressure, that kind of thing, change. If we graph the concentrations of N2O4 and NO2 over time, we get graphs like you see on this slide. We start in the initial situation with only N2O4, and as that is consumed, its concentration, of course, decreases. As that takes place, and the reason it's, the concentration is decreasing is because that N2O4 is being converted to NO2, and that builds in over time. But what we notice, and measurements will absolutely confirm this, is that once chemical equilibrium has been achieved, the concentrations do not change with time. So we got flat lines for the concentrations for all eternity in the state of chemical equilibrium. So the graph on the left just shows you how the concentrations of reactants and products change with time as the system goes from a non-equilibrium to an equilibrium state. What we're seeing in the right-hand graph is different. This is a graph of the reaction rates for the forward and reverse reactions as a function of time. And they look similar, but there are some key differences here and some key things to point out. So the blue trace is the rate of the forward reaction. Little k sub f indicates the rate constant of the forward reaction. And of course, that's at a maximum at the start of the reaction when we only have N2O4 present. And the rate of the reverse reaction begins at zero. As N2O4 is used up, the rate of the forward reaction slows down. And at the same time, as NO2 comes in, the rate of the reverse reaction increases. At some point, the two rates become equal to each other. And at that point, equilibrium has been achieved. So we can see that the two rates are at an equal level and remain so for all eternity in the state of chemical equilibrium. The last thing to point out about both of these rates is that they are not equal to zero. The rates are non-zero in the state of chemical equilibrium. So forward and reverse reactions are still taking place. 
just like the bathers getting in and out of the ocean. And so reaction is still occurring in the forward and reverse directions. It's just we don't see any change on the macroscopic level in concentrations. If you look, for example, at figure three, because for every reactant molecule that becomes product molecules, two product molecules get together and become a reactant molecule. What we've focused on so far are chemical reactions, particularly this chemical reaction of N2O4 becoming two NO2 molecules. But equilibria and dynamic equilibria in particular are also important for physical changes, physical processes like phase transitions. For example, the conversion of liquid bromine, liquid Br2, to gaseous Br2. We take a sample of liquid bromine and put it in a sealed ampule like this, we can see both liquid and gas in the ampule. So we've got liquid, for example, here at the bottom and the kind of darkish orange brown color here at the top indicates the presence of Br2 gas. And physical phase transitions, the liquid gas transition in particular, can be in a state of what's called physical equilibrium. This is a dynamic state, and we represent this just like we would a chemical process, really, just with the substance in the two different phases on either side of the reversible arrow. And dynamic means that liquid molecules are becoming gas and gas molecules are becoming liquid at all times, even in the equilibrium state. What equilibrium means here is that the amounts of liquid and gas or the concentrations of gas, for example, appear to be unchanging with time. Because this is a physical change, this situation is known as physical equilibrium, but conceptually it's extremely similar to chemical equilibrium. It's just we're looking at a physical rather than a chemical change.